Hello everybody, welcome to the video on low Earth and geostationary orbits and satellites. This video will talk about low Earth orbits, otherwise known as LEO satellites, as well as geostationary satellites that are in geostationary orbits. When we examine these two types of orbits, we want to look at various properties of these orbits as well as the satellites that are in these orbits. So these include the orbital radius, r, and also the altitude that is included in the radius. The altitude is usually defined as the distance of the orbit above Earth's surface. The satellites that are in these orbits will have various different values for the orbital velocities. Now, just to remind you, the orbital velocity is given by the square root of g capital M over r. Here, the m is the mass of the Earth. They also have different orbital periods. Orbital period is the time taken for the satellite to complete one revolution of their orbits. And additionally, we'll also compare the differences in the gravitational potential energy as well as kinetic energy of these satellites. We'll start with geostationary orbits. Geostationary orbits, they have the same velocity as Earth's rotational motion. And you can see that as Earth rotates, the satellite that is in the geostationary orbit is orbiting the Earth at exactly the same orbital velocity. This means the orbital period for geostationary orbit is exactly 24 hours, which is identical to the amount of hours in a day. Due to the same velocity and the same orbital period, this is the reason why geostationary satellites, they appear to be stationary relative to a point on the Earth. So hypothetically, if you look up to the sky and you can see a geostationary satellite throughout the day, the position of this satellite will not change as it appears to be stationary relative to you, as you and the satellite are both traveling at exactly the same orbital velocity. Besides the 24 hour orbital period, Geostationary satellites also have a much higher orbit. This is roughly 36,000 kilometers in altitude. Geostationary orbits are also equatorial, so this means it is directly above the equator of the Earth. And because Earth orbits and rotates on its own axis in an easterly direction, the satellites in these orbits must also travel in an easterly direction to maintain the stationary property of these orbits. Two typical uses of geostationary satellites include telecommunication, so this is to receive and send radio signals for communication purposes, and also weather monitoring. These two applications rely on the advantage of geostationary orbits, and that is one particular satellite will always appear to be stationary to a point on the Earth. So the distance between the satellites and a location on the Earth will remain constant throughout their orbits. Now in contrast, low Earth orbits, otherwise known as LEOs, they have a much lower altitude. And the altitude exact can be quite variable. Usually we say this is around a few hundred kilometers to up to 2,000 kilometers. Due to the lower altitude, we require less energy to actually launch satellites to these low Earth orbits. So we can do them more efficiently, faster, and at a lower energy expenditure. Due to a lower radius of these orbits, they have a much faster orbital velocity. And due to the faster velocity, they have a much shorter orbital period. A disadvantage of these low Earth orbits is that the satellites in these orbits, they're very close to Earth's atmosphere. And due to the atmosphere, there's lots of air resistance. The air resistance will cause the satellites to lose kinetic energy. And this causes a phenomenon called orbital decay, where satellites will eventually return back down to the Earth as they lose the velocity or kinetic energy. So since they're more prone to orbital decay due to the atmospheric air resistance, these LEO satellites often require periodic reboosting to maintain the orbit. So they need to use some sort of fuel to reboost and regain the kinetic energy they have lost due to the orbital decay. 
Some common uses of LEO orbits include the International Space Station, several types of spy satellites, and the Hubble Space Telescope. Calculate the altitude above Earth's surface and the orbital velocity required for geostationary orbits. So we know that geostationary orbits have a particular and unique property, that is their period is 24 hours. Now we can use Kepler's third law of orbital motion, where r cubed divided by t squared is equal to g capital M, where capital M here is mass of the Earth, divided by 4 pi squared. And we can times t squared on both sides, and we get r cubed is equal to t squared gm divided by 4 pi squared. And of course, we can cube root both sides to find the orbital radius of a geostationary orbit. Now, t squared, this is the period, which is 24 hours, but remember, this has to be in seconds, which is the SI unit. So 24 hours, there are 60 minutes in one hour, times by 60 seconds in one minute, and square that. G is 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11, and mass of the Earth is 6.0 times 10 to 24 kilograms. And we divide all of this by 4 pi squared, and everything here is cube root. And this gives us a pretty large radius of 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meters. So the altitude here, remember, this is included in the orbital radius. The altitude is the radius minus the radius of the Earth. So 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 minus 6.371 times 10 to the power of 6. And this gives me an altitude of 3.6 times 10 to the power of 7 meters. And this is also the same as 36,000 kilometers. Now, what about for orbital velocity? Orbital velocity is given by the equation gm over r square root. Of course, m here is also the mass of the Earth. So 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11 times by the mass of the Earth divided by the radius. Now, the radius here, remember, is not the altitude. This is still the original radius that we calculated from Kepler's third law. So 4.2 times 10 to the power 7, and everything here is square rooted. And we get a velocity of 3,076 meters per second. Now, I want to briefly speak about geosynchronous orbits versus geostationary orbits, as this is a common source of confusion for lots of students. Geostationary orbits is specifically one that's above the equator of the Earth, and it moves in an easterly direction to maintain a 24-hour period, and also remains stationary relative to a point on the surface of the Earth. In contrast, geosynchronous orbits has roughly the same altitude above a surface, but it does not remain above the equator at all times. As you can see in blue, the geosynchronous orbit traverses across different latitudes and longitudes. And as a result, they do not remain stationary above a surface. This table summarizes the differences between low Earth orbits and geostationary orbits. Low Earth orbits have a much lower altitude, whereas geostationary orbit has a much higher one and a very specific one of 36,000 kilometers. In terms of total energy, low Earth orbits have a lower energy, whereas geostationary orbits have a high energy. We'll look at energy differences in more detail in a moment. Low Earth orbits have a much shorter period, and geostationary orbits have an exactly 24 hour orbital period. And coming along with a shorter period, low Earth orbits have a faster orbital velocity, whereas geostationary orbits have a slower orbital velocity. Finally, let's compare the energies between these two types of orbits. Geostationary orbits have a 24-hour period, and they have a greater 
gravitational potential energy. This is because gravitational potential energy is equal to minus g m m over r. When your radius is much larger, your gravitational potential energy becomes much larger as well, or becomes less negative. In contrast, it has a smaller or lower kinetic energy due to its slower orbital velocity. Remember, kinetic energy equals to half mv squared. It has a higher total energy compared to LEO orbits, and we'll talk about total energy for circular orbits in another video in more detail. Compared to LEOs, one advantage of GEOs is that it has less orbital decay due to a much smaller atmospheric drag. When the satellite is 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth's surface, the atmosphere is much thinner and less dense compared to low Earth orbits. This means Due to the smaller atmospheric drag, geostationary orbits don't require periodic reboosting that the low Earth orbits often require. LEO orbits have a lower gravitational potential energy because of a smaller radius. And due to the small radius, they also have a faster orbital velocity, which then gives them a higher kinetic energy. But compared to geostationary orbits, they have a lower total energy. And as we discussed earlier, due to the smaller altitude or orbital radius, there is a greater amount of atmospheric drag due to air resistance. And this will cause a greater orbital decay. And this is the reason why lots of LEO orbits, they often require reboosting to regain the lost kinetic energy to maintain the stable orbits. And this will conclude the video on low Earth orbits and geostationary orbits.